Thank you for joining me on this last segment on today's show. Just to go over the Indianapolis Colts a little bit more, a lot of, I think, potential could be reached with this Colts team in 2024. And it all goes back to their quarterback, Anthony Richardson. And after coming off a season where he barely played because of that shoulder injury he suffered, now heading into this year, everybody wants to keep him safe. Everybody's monitoring him, how his progression is going. But right off the bat, their general manager, Chris Ballard, made it clear that there wouldn't be any limitations on Anthony Richardson in camp after suffering that shoulder injury, like I said last year. Um, It even caused some people to question the running ability, the skill set that Anthony Richardson possesses, and maybe putting a cap on it a little bit, reining him in a little bit more from running the ball too much this upcoming year. If you look at some of the stats last year uh, for Anthony Richardson, 136 yards on the ground, four touchdowns, and 5.4 yards per carry in little time, which isn't bad. Four touchdowns in that span, 136 rushing yards, and 5.4 yards per carry is pretty impressive if you have that not obviously in four or five games that he played, but over a course of a season, they're going to go down a little bit, the yards per carry will, but those are not bad numbers to have in the pace that he was setting for himself. Maybe a little bit worrying, but it is something to bring to the table if you're Anthony Richardson that could could excite a lot of Colts fans and could bring another dimension, another exciting factor to this offense that um, is very talented, I believe, in terms of the weapons. Shane Steichen, I like him as an offensive-minded coach, coming up with different schemes and plays for everybody to succeed in this is something that I think everyone's looking forward to. And to that note, Shane Steichen touched on that topic about shutting down any noise about Anthony Richardson not running the ball in this offense next year. He said that Anthony Richardson will be used frequently as a runner, but not as a run-first quarterback. I'll say it again, he will be used frequently as a runner, but not a run-first quarterback. So he explained what that means in his next statement. He said, it's just like, hey, are you going to limit the run game? And I kind of think like, shoot, are you going to limit Steph Curry from shooting three-pointers? That's one uh, of Anthony's strengths. We're not going to get away from that. So I like the analogy. It is a an ability that you don't really get too often. You know, everybody, I think, nowadays wants a... Everybody ideally would like a Jalen Hurts, a Patrick Mahomes, a Josh Allen, um, a Lamar Jackson, almost, kind of, with the running ability. Uh, Not a run-first quarterback. I think that's someone people think as a run-first quarterback. But really, Josh Allen, Patrick... um, I'm drawing a blank now. Jalen Hurts. Those guys that have this different dimension to their game knowing that they can make all the throws, but also probably run over a defensive back trying to tackle them and gain six, seven yards, maybe even more with their running ability and just their athleticism as a whole. Anthony Richardson has that to the level of anybody, I think, in the NFL currently with just his frame. He looks like Cam Newton out there, the way he's built, the kind of um, you know frame that he is out there for the Colts and how dominant and the levels that Cam Newton reached you kind of get excited in that standpoint. And to take that away, Shane Steichen is not having any of it. He said he's going to use him frequently as a runner, but just not run first. And with that, Anthony Richardson shared almost the same sentiment, calling it um, his running ability, one of his superpowers, and that he believes it wouldn't be good for this offense at all if um, they took it away completely. It's about being smarter and picking your spots is something that Anthony Richardson stressed in conversation in interviews talking about the potential of maybe limiting his running game in 2024. He emphasized that he trusts Shane Steichen to protect him also in the running game, which is something that a lot of people don't think about, including myself, that a lot of times the coach, the offensive coordinator, is calling these plays, these RPOs, these uh, just option plays that do have the quarterback running it over and over again sometimes. If the Ravens' offense sort of fits that mold, the amount of times Lamar runs it, option plays, quick throws, just the running, the motion that you see, a lot of times it's the coach. It's on the coach to call those plays, obviously, in those scenarios. But he trusts, he Anthony Richardson says he trusts Shane Steichen to protect him in those situations. And also, 
Shane Steichen trusts Anthony Richardson to not overrun it, to not just bail on a passing play or a play-action pass and just run it because he feels a little bit of pressure, so he takes off. It goes hand-in-hand. You have to find the right balance, and that's where um, the talent aspect of this, the weapons that this Colts team has, kind of comes into the equation now because Anthony Richardson isn't naive to the fact that they have great players on this team. He said in one of his answers during the uh, the media availability last week, he said, man, I don't feel like there's any way you can stop the offense. We've got too many options. Me, I'm two options within myself, throwing the ball and running the ball. Then you've got JT back there, and um, we got all these weapons catching the ball for us. So he's not naive to the fact that, hey, I can still run the ball, but also you have to be smart about it. Like you said, pick your spots and use the weapons you have at your disposal. JT, he mentioned, Michael Pittman had a great year last year. Josh Downs, an underrated young receiver that not too many people know about, but he had a very solid season for the Indianapolis Colts. And then this year, they added A.D. Mitchell to that equation as well. The fact that he fell to the second round is crazy. It's a crime that he fell there. Now he is added to this Colts offense, which is just almost almost loaded um, to an extent. They're all, they're all super young. Other than Michael Pittman, they're all really a year or two in. So you got you kind of have to limit your expectations there. But it is super exciting to know that you have all this talent around a super athletic and talented quarterback like Anthony Richardson. I think going back to the running game, I wouldn't limit it. I wouldn't try and tell Anthony to have it as his last absolute option. Um. I agree that limiting this offense, like Anthony Richardson said, uh, Anthony Richardson said, limiting it just only hurts this offense because, of course, running it is a cheat code. But at that same, but in that same breath, Indianapolis has all these other passing options that they could go to and not abuse just Anthony Richardson running it over and over and over again because it's just going to lead to him getting hurt again. Obviously, so finding that balance. If you have the running game once, you can use the running game once in a while with him, with JT. You know, design plays for Anthony to run once in a while. Have him keep it a bunch of times. Maybe just hand it off to Jonathan Taylor. You can have that integrated in your offense. But again, finding that balance is the biggest thing for me. Um, It's the biggest word for me in any offense that I consider prolific, elite at that next level. You really don't know what is coming next. And that's the scary part about it, right? If you're a defense and you study all week the endless possibilities of what this offense could throw at you, what they could look like, what they could line up in, all the motions and everything like that. Once you hit the field and you're still about 50-50, not knowing what's going to come your way, that's when it becomes almost impossible to stop some of the offenses nowadays. And the 49ers, you go back to the Chiefs, they're always the premier the epitome of what I'm talking about because of all the options that the 49ers have the genius play calling of uh, Kyle Shanahan everything almost looks the same sometimes and it looks completely different in the same formation they'll run it with Christian McCaffrey unstoppable really in its own right then same look they could just toss it out to George Kittle have Debo Samuel line up in the backfield same thing I think this Colts offense could eventually get to with the talent that they have on their team. Patrick Mahomes, just in the player that he is himself, you think that you kind of know what he's going to throw at you, but then he'll surprise everybody, and it'll be a viral clip of him throwing it with his left hand behind the back or something like that. Um, A running play, something that you just don't know is coming. The balance, the unpredictability, all of that makes the offenses nowadays so prolific, so hard to stop why everybody wants to watch these NFL games now and how high scoring it is, how exciting it is when it's all about the offense. I think the Colts could get there. You limit your obvious tendencies that way also that you could find with young teams, young players going back to what they feel comfortable with. If they get to a level where Anthony Richardson is using his legs, using the wide receivers that he has, Jonathan Taylor is finding all the space and all these holes in opposing defenses, that's where... One should really enhance the other, should really influence the other in a positive way, not that the running game should be limited because they want to just throw it now all of a sudden or 
that the passing game suffers because Anthony Richardson could run it, so let's just go to that. It should play off of one another. One should enhance the other, and that way the Colts could really compete and be a sneaky team, I think, in the AFC South. If, the biggest if, if Anthony Richardson stays healthy and he is in there the majority of the season, this offense could be sneaky good at the end of the day, and that's exciting for the AFC, which is already stacked up with offensive talent, quarterbacks all over the place. Anthony Richardson, because he got you know the opportunity stolen from him last year, getting injured, he could really have a big year this year, almost to the level of C.J. Stroud. C.J. obviously, I think, had a better team, but I don't think it's crazy to say that Anthony Richardson could be having a similar season like that in 2024 um, with everything that he has in front of him. So that should be great to see. This offense, I'm glad they're not limiting Anthony Richardson. It should line up for a breakout season, hopefully for the second-year quarterback now in Indianapolis. But leave your guys' thoughts on that. But that'll wrap it up for today's show. I want to thank you guys for joining me on today's episode of the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. And also, please remember to like, follow, and subscribe to the show, as well as following the network on all forms of social media. If you want to catch more of the show, check out both YouTube channels, the GSMC Podcast Network channel, and the GSMC Sports Network channel for all different forms of NFL content on both of them. Then, as a final reminder, tune in every weekday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time for more NFL discussions, conversations around anything going on in the NFL with me, Manny Maradiege, as your host, thanking you for joining me, and I hope to see you guys back here with me tomorrow. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go to